Amen. Bless the Lord. We thank you for joining the Healing Place Global Alliance Weekly Prayer Call. My name is Dr. Denise J. Williams, and I'm your facilitator and prayer warrior on tonight. We thank God for all of you being on the call and being able to listen in on the call even after the live broadcast. If you would like to send us a donation, we are located at P.O. Box 350-662, Jacksonville, Florida, 32235. Again, if you'd like to send a donation or a prayer request, the address is P.O. Box 350-662, Jacksonville, Florida, and that zip code is 32235. If you would like to email in your prayer request, our email address is the broken vessel speaks at ya at gmail dot com. I'm sorry. Again, the broken vessel speaks at gmail dot com. So you can send in your prayer request, um, make a donation, send a donation in, however you want to reach out to us, and we will be here to pray with you for your breakthrough. Bless the Lord. Um, we are here every Monday night from eight to nine p.m. And um, we are here to pray with you and intercede for those of your those of you, those loved ones that need a word from the Lord. Amen. We thank God for all of our, our prayer warriors coming in on the line. We thank God for um, Minister Lois and um, Pastor Aileen being with us on tonight. Tonight, Amen. We're going to take a look at fasting, and um, as you know, we're going to go into our fast every Wednesday for the month of December leading up to Christmas, and I wanted to go over some scriptures, so please get your Bibles if you don't have your Bible available. Get your Bibles. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures regarding fasting and the purpose for the fast. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because a lot of a lot of people fast at the end of the year and they fast at the beginning of the year, but it's important to know the reason why you're fasting and what fasting is used for. Fasting is not a lot of things that people think it is, and um, we need to take a look at what God says about fasting in the Word. Amen? So if you amen. get your Bibles together, we're going to first turn to, amen. Let's turn to Mark nine twenty nine. The reason why we're going to start there is because we know that a lot of people use this scripture in relation to ministering to others, and um, we want to get this out of the way first. So we're going to go to Mark nine twenty nine. I'm reading in King James, but you guys can, um, whatever translation works best for you, we thank God for you. Mark 9.29 reads, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Amen. So we know that in this instance, Jesus is saying to them, to, to the disciples, that some deliverances have to be wrought after we've prayed and fasted. Amen. And we and that takes us into a different direction, talking about strongholds and different types of demons. But we're not going to get into that tonight. But Jesus did address that by saying that there are some instances or situations that we will have to pray and fast about. Amen. Before we see a breakthrough. And if anybody else has anything to add, as always, you could just jump right in and share whatever God puts on your heart. So I wanted to go to that one first because this one is used mostly in ministry, especially in deliverance ministries. This refer this scripture is referenced quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we so we do know that one reason why we sh we should pray and fast is in deliverance. If you are praying deliverance over somebody, first of all, before you pray deliverance over somebody, make sure that the Lord called you to do that. Amen. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. when you start dealing with spirits, amen, you got to make sure that, number one, God called you to that ministry, and number two, that you are, uh, are more rooted in the spirit of God and rooted in your faith to be able to handle that. Because deliverance ministry is no joke. And if you play with it the wrong yeah. way, you're going to be the one on the other end needing mm -hmm. some deliverance. Absolutely. So well. make sure that, that's why we have to be careful and mindful about how we go into praying for everybody, amen? amen. Especially, especially people who got loose hands. And what I mean by loose hands is they want to lay hands on everybody. Some instances yeah. God will lead you to not lay hands. That's right. Sometimes just speak a word. Amen. amen. So, amen. Um, again, we don't want to get too far off the topic because that takes us into deliverance and spirits and demons, and that's not our, our topic for tonight. But maybe that's a topic for another day. But I wanted to put that out there because that's ref referenced a lot. And, of course, it is real. It is what God tells us to do. 
when we are getting ready to go into deliverance ministries. Many people who do deliverance ministries, they pray and fast often. And why, and why I say often is because there's no number of times you do it. You do it as the, as the Lord leads you to do it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to go to Luke. That's so, so that's one instance, deliverance. So now we're going to Luke 2 and 37. Luke 2 and 37. And that's where, let me see, Mark, Luke, okay. Luke 2 and 37. Luke 2 and 37. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, Luke 2 and 37. And we're going to start at the 34th verse in that same scripture. So we're going to start at Luke 2 and 34. And Simeon blessed them. And said unto Mary his mother, meaning Jesus' mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also. Which he's talking about how the death of Jesus is going to, is going to hurt, tear her heart. Mm-hmm. Okay, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now, here we, here's our part. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel. Phanuel. Okay, thank you. Of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. So it sounds like she was a child bride. But anyway, she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in at that, in, at that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. Amen. Yes. So, now, now, so now that's another reason why we fast. We can fast to see the manifestation of God. So she was able to see the Lord's Christ. Mhm. Okay. While while Simeon blessed blessed Mary and Joseph, she was able to see Jesus Christ. So that was something that she was seeking the Lord about. She wanted to see the redemption of Israel, and He was the redemption of Israel. Right. Amen. So we all know who the mm-hmm. tribe of Asher is, right? Or should I go into that? That's one of the one of the that's one of the twelve sons of Jacob. Right, Amen. Jacob. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and you know that that this tribe came from his first wife Leah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to make sure we have some background on that. But, again, wanna, here's another. Go ahead, Lois. I want to point something out about this woman. She had been married seven years. She'd only been married seven years, and then her husband died. And for the next 84 years, she did not depart from the temple, mm-hmm. but served God with fasting and prayers day and night. So okay, so right. so basically, she just she just became dedicated to. She was like she was like what we would call a modern day nun. She just right. she just gave mm-hmm. the rest of her life. She dedicated the rest of her life to to to, to the Lord. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So she the next eighty four years. So she lived to old age, and it says that in the King James version that she was of a great age. Great age. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what it, that's how it describes her of a great age, and it says she was a widow of about four score and four years. So that would be the 80 and four years. Right. Exactly. And she departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers. Listen to this, night and day. Day, yes. So her entire yes. existence was about praying and fasting. Mm-hmm. So she must have had an amazing relationship with God. Yeah. Because all she had time to do was pray and fast. Yeah. So when you are at that point in your Christian walk where all you are doing is dedicating yourself continually to God, continually to God, he's going to show you things, amen, that other people are not going to see. Because you, because when we get close to God, that's when he shows us more. Right. So that's, that's, that's another instance where God will, where, where fasting, fasting lets us hear God more clearly. So in her case, she had a, she had a, almost a mouth to mouth relationship with God. And what I mean by mouth to mouth is that when God spoke it, she heard it. Because because this was a deep relationship because she fasted night and day. It says. Yes. 
That's a, that's yeah. an amazing testimony right there by itself. Mm-hmm. That's that's why I said let me stop and point that out because you you when I, you know I know numbers. So you're talking 84 years fasting and, and praying, and then mm. you add the seven years that she was married. That's already 91 years, and she wasn't. Right, an and that's why I said she's a great age. It mm-hmm. doesn't say how yeah. old, but she's looking at easily right. being over 100 years old. Exactly. Easily. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Easily. Because the average bride at that time got married at 12 or 13 years old. Yep. Okay, so 12 or 13. So we would call those child brides, but 12 yeah. or 13. So, right. you know, so now we're, we're already in the 110s, 115s. Exactly. 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 So that 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 tells us that you know God blesses our lives when we continually continually um, submit ourselves to Him. So she's 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 living an epistle of the fact that we can be close, as close to God as we want to be, but the only difference is how often, how committed are we to fasting and praying? Mm. How you know we could be as close to God as you want to be. But you have to commit yourself to fasting and praying because you will not understand God or hear his heart if we are not doing those two things. He left those two there for us for a reason. Mm-hmm. Because the more we fast and pray, the more we become less carnal and more spiritual. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason why we need to fast, so we can hear the heart of God. So we have deliverance. We have hearing the heart of the Father and understanding what he what he wants, and because she was so faithful, he asked, she asked God to see to see the the redemption of Israel, which was Jesus Christ. And here they are. Here she is, while Simeon is blessing Mary and Joseph, bringing the child in. She was able to witness that. Right. Mm-hmm. So not only does God fulfill, God God fulfill our needs and wants, but the desires of our heart also by being obedient and fasting. Okay, now we're going to move on in the New Testament, and we're going to Acts 10 and 10. Another example of fasting. Amen. And when we have it, let's say amen. Amen. Oh, you have it already. Amen. Okay, so now we're talking about Cornelius here in this passage because we're getting ready to start in the middle of the chapter. So just for clarity, we're going to talk about Cornelius here. And if we go to 10 and 30, Acts 10 and 30, it says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, Thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Okay. So obviously Cornelius was praying and this is this is this is in reference to getting closer to God. Now this man, listen to this. He was fasting and praying and didn't even have the Holy Ghost. True. Mm-hmm. Now, some of us got the Holy Ghost, and we can't even pray 15 minutes. But this man has prayed so much that the angel, which was the man in bright clothing that he saw in this vision, told him that, hey, your prayers are like a memorial to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a man that doesn't have the spirit of God. He just has the word, the letter. Mm -hmm. And then the angel gives him instructions to call for Peter. And, of course, this is when Peter starts talking to him about the Holy Ghost. Right. So, again, God will meet our needs when we seek him. Any lack that's in our life, he will meet the need. Now, he didn't pray specifically for the Holy Ghost, but God knew that he needed that. Mm-hmm. So, see, this is something that we miss sometimes when we, when we are serving God. Sometimes when we are serving God, we're so focused on what we need, so we don't, we don't just pray and ask God 
Well, in other words, intercede on behalf of others. We don't intercede on behalf of others. If we just continue to intercede on behalf of others, whatever need you have in your life, even before you ask for it, God will meet that need. Because God knew that in order for him to move ahead spiritually, he would need to be a spiritual being. So he needed the Holy Ghost. All he had was a letter. Mm-hmm. And so again, his, go ahead. He was a Gentile. Remember, he was a Gentile. Right. So, for, first of all, you know, the Jews weren't supposed to deal with him in the first place. And this is why it was so amazing that God was speaking to him. Now, this is a Gentile. He's not even a Jew. He's not even raised up in the faith. And exactly. here he is fasting and praying so much that God, God had to acknowledge him. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now God is saying to God, God sends Peter to him, and then we know the rest is history. But he's talking. But 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 the thing is, is that God responds to the needs of His people. This is another area where fasting is an important tool for us as believers, because it helps us understand God, and then God responds to us in a way where we are blessed. Because this is where now remember this was this was Acts ten. He was he was a Gentile. So after this, Jesus had already risen. Now we're looking at the new converts that are coming, because now this now now the church has expanded, or God has expanded the church to include more than just the Gentiles. The adopted sons and daughters of God are now taking their place in the kingdom, and this is what God is addressing here with Cornelius. Right. Amen. So this is another instance where fasting and praying brings a result. This man fasted and prayed so long till angels just came up to him and started talking to him like it was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> That's an inst- that, I mean, you know, and then we have another woman, 80, 85 years, she served the Lord. 84, 85 years, she was serving the Lord. So now we know that being faithful to God he will respond to us if we're faithful to him in fasting and praying. So we now, these, these two passages that I selected specifically was to show us the power of fasting. Okay. The deliverance power comes through what? Fasting and prayer. Getting closer to God is through fasting and prayer. So this is why these two scriptures were kind of jumped out at me. And, um, okay, hold on. There's another scripture that um, I wanted to go over to about fasting. Okay, now we're going to go to Acts 14 and 23, another instance of why fasting is important. Fourteen and twenty-three. Okay. So now this is this is the setting up of the early church. Uh-huh. And we're going to start at verse 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Ly- Lystra and to I- Iconium and Antioch, mm-hmm. confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So that's another reason why we're fasting, because we fast for spiritual clarity and understanding to understand the seasons that we are in. Sometimes you're going through a season of warfare. Sometimes we're fasting for um, more understanding. Sometimes we're fasting to hear God's direction. But whatever it is, it's something to enhance us as we walk with the Lord and we go through tribulation. So now we're down to verse 23. When they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Now, this is why I, I, I personally believe that any church that ordains and sets elders and leaders in place, they should be fasting. The, the leadership should be fasting and praying mm-hmm. because man's choice is not always God's choice. Not at all. Amen. And we and we saw that and we saw that lesson with um with, with when Samuel when the prophet Samuel went down to David's house and was going to select the next king. Right. Mm-hmm. And now David was out there in the field with the sheep, 
and and the prophet was was at saying this is, Lord is this him is the brother him and the brother wasn't him even though he looked like a king to the prophet but that wasn't God's choice not at all and then he prompted the prophet to ask ask is is there another son and yeah, that's how and that's how he found out about David out there exactly. So this is why this is why I firmly believe that a lot of churches will put people in place mm-hmm. because they may understand the, but they they know how to quote scripture or they know how to break down scripture and they know the Bible or they preach and they have charisma and all of those things are nice and wonderful but if that person is not God's choice it doesn't matter all of those things don't matter nope they're not gonna last nope. Now, I'm not saying God is not going to use that person, but what I am saying is for the office and the time and the season that God is addressing at that moment, that might not be God's choice. Mm-hmm. So this is why I really believe that we need to get back to fasting and praying because we have all kinds of people getting set in office. And I, I, don't, know, I don't know if the sinners got more, more Holy Ghost than the, than the saints these days. <laughs> I really don't, you know, you, you look at some stuff and you're like, well, well, Lord Jesus, where did this come from? Where, where did you get that revelation from? Where did that come from? I've had a few so, like, so, so these are instances where fasting is a key, is, is a key, is, is relevant and is key in us understanding what we're doing in relation to God. It's just not, it's, it's not just, oh, we ain't going to eat for a few days. Fasting should always come along with prayer. In each of these instances, we saw that fasting came with prayer. With prayer, yes. Yeah. Amen. So we have to Amen. learn. We have to learn how to fast and pray. So just because you decide not to eat, that's not necessarily a fast. Okay, we open a fast with you. prayer, and you break a fast with prayer. Mhm. So we need to, I just wanted to go over that so that we could have an understanding of what we're doing over these next three Wednesday, Wednesdays that we've decided to fast. Because we, in other words, fasting is a personal decision, and we have to seek the Lord about why we are fasting. And that's why I was charging everybody to be reflective and ask God what it is in your life that you feel you need to go to that next level with. And if, and if you are at a point in your life where you feel like you're not at that next level or you want to go to that next level, you want to go deeper in God, you want more revelation, fasting is the way to get there. Mm-hmm. So that when we go on this fast, even though we all may, may have different reasons for engaging God, amen, the amen. fact that we are fasting and sacrificing, God will hear, out, will hear us and respond to us accordingly, like he did for Cornelius, like he did for the prophetess Anna. Mm-hmm. He would do it for us too. Mm-hmm. So this is why fasting is extremely important. And I'm trying to find that that other that other scripture in Revelations where it, we could, where it says we can't even hear God. We can't hear the voice of God until I can't find the scripture mm-hmm. right this second. But the reason why we're fasting is so that we can hear God, so that we know his voice. Mm-hmm. And the word tells us that his, that his sheep know, it, they know his voice. Just like you know your mom's voice, mm-hmm. your sheep, the, the sheep know your voice. Now, I haven't physically heard my father's voice since 2009, but when I hear it, I know it's him. Mm-hmm. He's deceased now. But it's just like a child knowing their mother's voice. You know what you're connected to. Right. If he's our shepherd, we're connected to him. So if we're connected to him. We know that voice. It's 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 distinct and more prevalent than any voice that we've ever heard before. So this is why fasting is so relevant because it pulls us in closer to God, so that we're not deceived by any other voice but His. Yeah. Yeah. And and that brings us into intercession, which is a whole other topic that we're going to talk about because I'm going to get into this book a little more about intercession, but. This is this is this is what God gives us. When we fast, He gives us power. He commands, He allows us to have, walk in more spiritual authority, which relates back to the book of intercession that we was we were dealing with earlier. See, God always has a way of bringing things together. Yes, He does. Yes. And then I went to church, and the, and 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 and, and at this church, they're getting ready to do a study on intercession, and they're starting it this Sunday. 
Mm-hmm. They're actually going to have a class on it. So God has a way of bringing everything together. And the part about spiritual authority that I've already read in this book is really important to me because if we're going to be walking in deliverance, and every believer should be able to walk in deliverance. Every believer should be able to rebuke the devil. And that's yeah. all deliverance is, is being able to rebuke the devil. And we need to know how to do it. There are times when God will tell you to lay hands there. God, times when God will just tell you to pronounce it and decree it. Because if you are walking in the right spiritual authority, you should be able to declare and decree it. And it is so because, because you said so. Because the Holy Ghost in you is activated and it will make it so. Not because you said it, not because Denise Lois or Aileen said it, but because the God in us has ordained that to be so. Amen. And this is why it's important for us to intercede, because we, without, without praying and fasting and without that intercession, we're not going to be able to walk in that spiritual, author, uh, spiritual authority that we need. All that treading upon serpents and stuff, that comes at a cost. Amen. Like the prophetess Anna who gave 84 years of her life to service to God. Praying and fasting, it says, what is it, day and night. Mm-hmm. So, again, we come back to how, how deep do you want to go to God? How close do you want to be to God? It comes through mm-hmm. prayer and fasting. So when people tell me they want to get closer to God, that's where you start, praying. And you can't and you can't think about trying to get close to God until you get into a place where you can pray and fast. Because some revelation won't come through any other way. That's the only way it will come through sometimes. Amen. You place your flesh is in total subjection to the spirit. Right. And then what happens is as we pray and fast, the car, the thing the carnal things, we don't worry about it so much. Mm-hmm. We don't worry about it because what happens is is that a lot of times we're worrying about things that we should place in God's hands. For example, some people are so afraid of being broke so they never tithe or give money. Mm. So you're bound by the things of this world because you're not praying and fasting enough because if you pray and fast long enough, you'll learn to trust God. Mm-hmm. And you won't have that fear of, well, what happens when I run out of money? What happens if I give if I give my last ten dollars to the church? What's going to happen next week when I need gas? God makes a way. He has a way of making a way. Of making a way. Yes, He does. He has a way. Because I can't rem- I can't I can't even tell you guys how many times where I have my last five dollars or ten dollars, and somebody some some random stranger will come up and say, "You you have three dollars, you have five dollars," and I just go back and put the whole ten dollars in the bucket. I don't care. Mhm. And then next thing you know, somebody will give me money, bless me with money, or bless me with whatever I need, whatever mm-hmm. I needed. When that mm-hmm. time came, God sent somebody with the resources. Mhm. So maybe it wasn't always money in my hands, but God sent somebody with the resources. So this is the thing is that when you get close enough to God, you yes, you do care about the carnal things like, you know, you, you need a place to stay, you need a job, stuff like that. But you don't nitpick over the little things mm-hmm. because you trust that to God to take care of it for you. That's true. And this, yeah. is, and this is where God wants us to be in our every day, not just for the little things, but for all things. All things. All things. Amen? Because if we keep entertaining this thing of, I'm afraid to do this because I don't know what God's going to do, we don't know what God's going to do. This is, this is where the trusting him comes in at. Mm-hmm. And, and the closer we get to God and the more we fast and pray, here's the thing. You're going to want to build kingdom things. You're going to want to build people, which is building the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And all of this comes out of having a, a, a strong prayer life and fasting on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And this is where the promotion comes. See, mm-hmm. when we look at the prophetess Anna and we look at um, um, Cornelius, God promoted them. That's why mm-hmm. when God promotes you, he allows you to see more into the spirit realm than we already are now. That's true. That's We're true. able to understand more about spiritual things. We're under, able to understand more about prophetic things than we know now because we're given a promotion. Why? Because God can trust you with the anointing. <laughs> Just imagine the trust that God had in this woman. 84 years, she's in the temple 
praying and fasting day and night. Mm-hmm. I wonder what she would write if she could write her memoirs about what her what God has shown her over those eighty four years. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, imagine what she's seen. Yeah, the kind of revelations that she's given her. Mm-hmm. And see, what we don't understand is that sometimes God brings us to. Um, uh, allow certain situations to come in our lives to bring us to a place where we realize we need to fast and pray because you don't grow in the mountaintop. We grow in the valley. That's where faith grows. That's where trust grows. That's where and that's where tribulation is. It's not a happy time in the valley. No. In the valley is cold. In the valley is lonely. In the valley is windy. On the mountaintop is sunshine. It's warm. You can feel the sun on your face. The, bre- the air is different. The breeze is different. The view is different from the mountaintop than it is in the valley. Mm-hmm. But God allows those valley experiences so that we will grow and that we will come to him and that we will seek him more deeply. He doesn't necessarily put tribulation on us, but when tribulation comes our way, he teaches us how to overcome in that valley. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now let's look at Second Corinthians um, 6 and 5. Second Corinthians six and five. Somebody else gets it first. Can you go ahead and read it? Second Corinthians six and five. You need to go a little bit before. You just want to go. Uh, you want to start. Well, let's read from Second uh, Corinthians six and one to five. Six and one. Okay. Now this is Paul talking. When we have worked together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace in, of God in vain. But he said, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be plain. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience. In tribulation, in need, in distress, in strife, imprisonment, in tumult, in labor, in sleepiness, in fasting, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, and on the right hand and on the left hand. Amen. By honor and that's it, okay? Okay, yeah, and then it says, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. But the, but, the, but the meat of it is already there. It says that in fastings and in praying, okay, because he's telling, Paul is telling them about that the Christian life is not, it's not fluff every day. And we were just talking about that in the valley. It's not fluff mm-hmm. because we are constantly waging a spiritual war against the enemy. Yeah. It's a spiritual war. And he's explaining He's explaining to them that, guess what? This is not no cakewalk. This is not for the faint-hearted. Not at all. Or, or like the kids say, if you, this, this, is, this is not for punks. If you a punk, you ain't going to last. Mm-hmm. You're not going to last. So he's telling them. He's like, you know what? Afflictions, distresses, that you're going to have much patience, necessities, in labors, and tumults, in watchings and fasting. So he's telling them, this is how you're going to survive this thing. Fasting, laboring, praying. Mm-hmm. Because if you, because if your heart is not a hundred percent sold out for God, when it's time to fast and pray, you're gonna go run in the other direction. So you're gonna go running for the hills. Or you're gonna backslide, or you're gonna give up, or you're gonna find a reason not to engage God anymore because you're gonna feel like it's too hard. And this, is, and this is why fasting is so important, because it anchors you into who you are. It reminds you that you, who you are connected to. We have to stay connected to the vine. Absolutely. Yeah, without, him, we, without him, we wither and die. Amen. Without the vine, the branch withers and dies without the vine. Bless the Lord. Mm-hmm. You're right about that. So we don't want to be, we don't want to, in other words, we don't want to be like a, 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 um, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Simple. You don't want to be an empty wagon making a lot of noise. You want to walk in the spirit and you want to walk in the authority that Jesus Christ has given to us. Amen. 
So every now and then we have to become reflective and say, you know what, God, I need to fast. I need to hear you more clearly. I need to put some things in my life on the altar, and you deal with me in these areas. That's why it's a very personal decision, and I wanted everybody to be on the line so that we could, um, so that we could, um, we could corporately go into this fast. And I want to go into this fast. Put yourself on the altar. What is it in your life that you feel like God needs to do with you? Are there areas in your life that you need to work on? Because we want to be ready for the new year. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people wait until January and they do it in the new year, but I feel like preparation is needful before we go into the new year. That's true. Well, I'm also mindful of the of the, the season we just came out of because we know that after Halloween, mm-hmm. the darkness, darkness is coming at us anyway. So we need to be in a place of preparation and a place of seeking the face of God and the heart of God and being in position because it, it may come necessary for us to walk in that authority. Amen. With power. With power. Yes. You can't walk with power if you don't fast and pray. Right. You don't seek his peace. And, and, we know, and we know that fasting brings us to a place of power. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's in the Holy Ghost, Acts 1 and 8, mm-hmm. that we mm-hmm. receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us, mm-hmm. and we become witnesses unto God. Well, in order to remain a witness, we have to stay stirred up. We have to continue to um, allow God to give us, like, like the old folks used to say, a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. One baptism, many refillings. Mm-hmm. Amen? Because every day that we're around other people, we have to ask God to fire us back up again. Because when you, when you mix with the world, <clears throat> we're influenced by the world and the things that are around us. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to come back to God and pray that we haven't been contaminated, that our thought processes are not contaminated, that something didn't happen during the day that we allowed it to distract us from what we're supposed to do. We have to continually pray for that because remember now, as much as Jesus loves us, and even though we're walking in the faith, we are still but flesh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are still but flesh. So we have to remember that. Now, I want to take a look at one more scripture, and then we're going to do our prayer request and pray, and then we're going to talk about the fast a little bit more on the dates and so forth. Bless God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Okay. God. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at First Peter, the first mm-hmm. chapter. And we're going to start at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Blessed be the Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if ye, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be in more, much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whom, ye, whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. So that's Peter writing to us, giving us that assurance that, that, that it is because of God that he's, he's redeemed us, that through faith God saved us, and he's keeping us. In other words, God has sealed us. Yes. Yeah. We're sealed. We belong to him. Mm-hmm. But in verse 6, it says we're still going to have manifold temptations, ma- ma- many temptations. So that means that it doesn't matter about the heaviness of this life and the temptations that we go through and that it's the trial of our faith that's more precious than gold. Mm-hmm. Amen? 
So this is why fasting is so important that we could hear God, that we could understand God, that we could continue to walk with God, that we will know God's presence, we will know God's voice, we will know when to move on God's behalf and when not to move on God's behalf. All of that comes from being in constant communication with him through fasting and prayer. Mm-hmm. Amen. I was going to add to that. That's the whole reason why you're in the valley, because he's preparing you for the next thing in him. And you can't handle that if you haven't gone through something. Mm-hmm. He, he, it's more like a controlled um, tribulation. When God leads you through it, he's controlling everything. He's there with you every step of the way. Because when the enemy comes at you, ain't no control of what he's going to do. He's going to mm-hmm. come at you with some stuff, and you got to be able to stand. You got to be able to stand in the face of whatever he's throwing at you. Because he's not a fair fighter. Exactly. It's just like, you know, little kids in the playground. You know, you might say, okay, we're going to just use fists, but some kid is going to kick you. Some kid is going to try to bite you because they're not fair fighters. Are they going to pick up something and hit you with it? Right. So the enemy is like that. He doesn't care if he destroys you in the process because he doesn't fight fair. This is why God wants us to be able to identify him at a distance, even afar off, because he knows that he doesn't fight fair. And what does the Bible say? We have to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Yes. 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 That's why we need those valley experiences. Those valley experiences keep us before the Father and keep us in prayer. Because mm-hmm. some of us would never go to God if we didn't have any problems. We wouldn't go to God. Well, see, yes, we would, yes, we would confess Christ, but we wouldn't go to God. If, if, if God never allowed us to go through temptation, we would take it for granted like we do everything and everybody else, and we would never, we would never fast and pray. We never do it. We're not that disciplined. We are not. But nobody is. Now we might want to we we might want to talk ourselves into believing it, but we're not. We're not. Uh-uh. It's just like me. Every Monday I'm starting a diet, and I'm saying forty pounds is still here. Uh-uh-uh. And that's what that's that's what we do with God. We keep telling God we're going to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You never there's get There's lessons to. that need to be taught. There's lessons that need. There's there's lessons that need to be taught because not only do those lessons prepare us for the battle, it perfects us as an individual. Mhm. That's true. Because mm-hmm. there's things inside of us that need to be worked out too. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have ways about us as human beings that God doesn't like. He wants to work it out, and He uses circumstances to come into our lives to show us where we need perfecting. Mm -hmm. And he expects us to humble ourselves and say, you know what, God, I didn't realize until this happened that I had a problem in this area. Mm Because some things you are not going to, you're not even going to know you have a problem with it until something presents itself. That's true. In a particular way. In a particular way. Because sometimes you'll go through things and until you see the difference, you'll make it so you see the difference. And when you see the difference, Lord, help me, because I didn't see that. Exactly. Lord, help me. Help me. Now, you might go around telling God that you love all your family, but what about that, that father that abused you when you were six years old, and now he's sick and needs you to come? Are you coming? Mm-hmm. Are you coming? Did, did, you really, mm-hmm. did you really forgive? Did you really? Now, I'm not saying forgive to the point where you let the person hurt you again, but I'm saying forgive to the point where if that person if that person needed you to come and handle their affairs, if that person needed you to come and deal with doctors on their behalf, would you do it? Would you do it if you dealt, if, if you advocated for them and they still turned around and turned on you? Could you still do it? See, this is this is what God this is what God this is why we have to fast and pray because there are things in our spirit that God wants to work out of us too. Yeah. There's a deliverance that God wants to get to as well. And when we become humble before God and we become vulnerable before him, we allow him to take take whatever it is out of us that's not right. That's not like him. Yeah. Because you can't stand in spiritual authority if you kind of messed up on the inside. On the statement, you can't do it. What did, what did, what did those sons of Sceva tell tell the tell those men that was trying to cast out that devil? Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, I know, but who are you? 
Who are you? Because they weren't clean. Their spirit wasn't clean. Their spirit was just as dirty as the demon that they were trying to cast out. So they said, yes, we know Jesus and Paul. We're scared of them. Who are you? For you. Not even that they were scared. We know them. And we're going to stay away from them. But who are you? That's why we have to fast and pray. Because fasting and praying gives us that wisdom to handle situations in the in the way that God wants it handled. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we, we, like we I just wanted to look up. at, I'm sorry, who said that? I said it's like having our spiritual tune-up, how we get exactly. to tune up our cars and so we have to tune up our <laughs> yeah. souls. So yeah. now God wants to tune us up. Because, you know, as much as we mm-hmm. think that we we're, we got it going on and we're praying and we're fasting and we're going to church and we're doing all these different things, it still doesn't matter. We're still in the flesh. And there may be something that God wants to deal with us about. And we have to get on our face so that we can hear him. Not that we're not saved, not that we're not living right or anything like that, but you still have to be in a place where let's hear what God has to say. Even so, it's not even about that. In order to go from one level to the next in God, you have to stand still long enough to hear where he wants you to go. Exactly. That's true. We just have to be, we have to be what God wants us to be. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is something that every believer has to go through. We all have to go through our time of, 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 of testing and tribulation and reshaping and positioning and growing and being promoted and, and letting God tell us what we need to do to get to that next level. All of us have to go through that. Mm-hmm. That's true. But again, just like, the, just like Anna that stayed in the church for, four, for, uh, for 85 years, how close do you want to be to God? Because if you want to be close enough to him, you will submit to him. You will go to him. You will spend time with him. And nobody will have to tell you to do it. You will know how much time you need to spend with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And once you get a, a real taste of it, you're going to want to spend more time with him. <laughs> 